Um, hi, everyone. Uh, as, as Steve mentioned, I'm Hannah Brackey. I am a product manager here at LabKey, um, specifically for our newest product, LabKey Sample Manager. Um, I worked in the lab for about 10 years before I came to LabKey and have experienced a variety of different types of freezer management systems. Um, I'll use that term loosely as, as you'll kind of see later on. Um, so I really wanted to talk about first the, the importance of um, why you need a sample centric freezer management system in the lab. Um, and that'll be my first talk. And the second one is really getting started with um, our product sample manager. So as I'm um, talking here, please feel free to ask questions during the presentation via the Zoom Q&A, and uh, we'll have plenty of time, I think, at, at the end of both presentations to, to be able to answer those. So the first thing that, that I wanted to cover is sort of a, a simplified sample life cycle. And a lot of times when we think about sample management, we, we tend to think about where that sample is currently in the lab, but there's a lot of things sort of before it ends up in the lab and then even maybe after it's consumed that um, where data is collected around that sample. And so the, the first thing is that that sample is collected somehow, right? It's either um, getting collected by, by your lab, um, likely in a different location or, or a different room than, than where you plan to store the samples. Um, it gets transported, that can be shipping. We used to receive samples um, from all over the world in, in one of my previous labs. Um, it could also just be walking it down the hall. And then sample receipt and registration and um, sometimes creating manifests. At that point, labs can choose to store samples um, or process or, or do a little bit of both. Um, and then sometimes those samples will get processed and, and stored again. Um, and we perform experiments on them and we do our analysis and, and QC and reporting. And so there are many components in that samples life cycle um, that are outside of, of a typical storage system or, or freezer management system. So in, in case you're wondering, um, in, in case this is a totally new topic for you, um, freezer management really is a way that we refer to um, how people are tracking samples in their lab, in their cold storage units. And from my, my previous comment, um, freezer management can mean a lot of different things to, to different people. The, um, I've actually been in labs that have used all of these different, different techniques for freezer management. So that can be as simple as assigning shelves or boxes to lab members and having them manage their own storage. So there's no record keeping. It's more of this is your box and um, you, can, you can use that or, or you can use that shelf. Um, and then the, the other boxes or shelves belong to somebody else. Also keeping a log sheet attached to the freezer um, that can be manually updated as people are adding or removing samples from storage using spreadsheets to track samples. Um, it was uh, really exciting when the Google Suite came out and you could start tracking spreadsheets where they could be opened by, by multiple people at once. And of course, since then, Microsoft Office ha has been working on that with 365. Or finally, really utilizing a freezer management software. Um, and, and that's the that's kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of, of freezer management. So we're going to talk about sort of the, the traditional, more structured uh, freezer management tools here. So in terms of spreadsheets, they can be very flexible and really capture exactly what each lab needs, right? There's not any rules or restrictions that, that say that um, what you can or can't capture here. Um, they do tend to be hard to maintain data integrity. 
Um, and they're usually uh, managed or maintained by a gatekeeper, um, which makes collaboration really difficult. So you've got uh, one or, or a couple people that are sort of in charge of managing those spreadsheets and it's both a burden on them, but also kind of disrupts the lab work process when you have to go through that gatekeeper to check your samples in and out of the freezer. And then uh, finally, there's really no formal chain of custody or audit record here. And so that becomes very cumbersome if you if you need uh, an audit record or are even trying to just troubleshoot what's happened to your samples over time. And then there are the traditional freezer applications um, that tend to be more structured than spreadsheets um, and usually are customizable to match lab freezers but they also only provide ways for samples to be registered during freezer location assignment. And so there's, um, I, I've seen some freezer management applications create sort of like a, a holding space or something so to, to get around this problem, but it's really a lot of workarounds um, to the fact that it's solely a freezer management system and, and nothing else. They're also not tracking actions taken on a sample outside of a freezer. So they're typically tracking freeze thaw counts and volume changes and check in, check out events. But um, there, there's not much room for, for additional data capture or um, recording uh, experimental data or what happens when that sample may have left the freezer. And then my personal experience is that some of these systems have good audit records, but they are very cumbersome and hard to sift through. And so when you are troubleshooting, when you, you know, when your box in real life isn't matching the box in the freezer, it still is taking hours to days to figure out what happened to those potentially missing samples. Um, and so those are, that's kind of the overview of, of the, the pitfalls of traditional freezer management tools. So I want to take a moment here and ask your opinion and, and kind of see why you're here today um, to learn about what your current freezer management challenges are. Um, I, I'm sure I, I could guess a few of you um, what they are, but, but I'd love to sort of hear that directly. And so Steve, if you're able to launch that poll um, for people to answer, we'll get back to it in, in just a couple minutes here. So I'll just pause for a second. Okay, great. Um, so just answer that at, at your convenience. And so now really to the meat of this presentation of what is a sample centric freezer management system look like and really these systems are meant to capture information about the sample outside the context of a freezer. Um, so this type of, of freezer management can allow for samples to be registered before they're into, entered into the freezer <clears throat> and in fact really before they're entered into the lab. So oftentimes you'll get a manifest from your collaborators before the samples are received. So you have an idea of how many samples you're receiving from that lab that day um, and can really sort of balance your, your workload and your, your capacity um, for the samples that you're getting. It can also capture the complete sample history, including movement within a freezer. So that complete sample history um, could be when data has been added, when there has been additional lineage information, when you may have created um, aliquots or derivatives from those samples and updated, um, uh, updated that metadata around it. And also tracking actions taken on a sample, including those freezer actions. So um, if a sample has um, been consumed or if it has been moved to a different, different, um, different lab where you're not using the, your freezer management system to track that, there are usually tools in place in these sample centric freezer management systems that will allow you to track that within the lab. 
And then finally, really maintaining those sample records after they've been consumed. And, and there are a lot of advantages to this. Um, maybe the, the most striking one is that you don't have to go digging through an audit log to see what samples ha have been there in, in the lab. It's really just always front and center what samples have been created. And so I, I have a couple slides here on when you might need a sample centric freezer management solution versus when you might want one. Um, so in my opinion, as, as a scientist and sort of a manager of a lab and also a data analyst, um, I, I think labs really do need a sample centric system if they're receiving them, right? If they're not generating them themselves. Um, you can save time and reduce mistakes by pre-registering samples and really preparing them for them to arrive, right? So you can just take one less step out of that very hectic workflow for your team members to create those samples ahead of time. If you're processing them, um, it, these uh, sample-centric solutions will also help provide tools that help you track that sample processing and really capture the full chain of custody. Um, so the, the labs that I've been in, we, we've often done a lot of, uh, of processing on samples. And so it's very useful to understand who did the processing on what day and what are the reagents used and what are, you know, what, what's the incubation time that it took um, in that, especially when you're trying to analyze results downstream. And then if you're performing experiments um, and sample centric uh, freezer management tools can also track these samples during an experiment and sometimes even capture the experimental data all in one tool. So you're really getting, again, that sort of full audit history and, and the full audit trail. So that all sounds really simple, right? Like if, if you do any of these things in the lab, you may need a sample centric solution. Um, of course, that's not the case. Not everybody has something like this. And so I think there's kind of the tipping point of, well, maybe we know we need it, but we don't, you know, we can't really, we can get by without it, right? And so I, I've created this other side of when you may want to have this system. Um, and, and this is what we found in a lot of our conversations with people is that they're frustrated with having disparate data sources and trying to figure out what's happened to a sample or they've got an audit coming and, and they wanna be able to track that more clearly. Um, when you're ready to standardize some of your lab processes, you know, maybe not all of them, but some of them um, will, will really help with efficiency and, um, and growth in the lab. If you want more insight into the sample life cycle, so if you're um, if you're having a hard time figuring out where a sample is at what time or who might be um, using it, uh, a sample centric freeze management system can can really help you get there. And um, if you need a complete audit trail, so I mentioned this before, and if um, that's something that's a, that's a need for your lab based on the type of science that you're doing, a sample centric system will, will really do that for you. And if your sample or if your lab is growing, growing maybe in sample number or workflows, um, and you want to just really improve efficiency in the lab. And if you want to have a collaboration tool, um, so a lot of sample centric systems will, because they make that sample life cycle so apparent, um, it's it's very easy to then collaborate with team members and say, okay, we we're getting 200 samples in today. You know, you take the first hundred, I'll take the second hundred, or something like that. And and that can all happen within the application and and give um, lab leaders some insight into the work as well. And it, really, if you just want a single solution to track all the lab work, if you um, don't, don't want to bother logging in to multiple places, the, this is the time to sort of start thinking about a, a sample-centric solution. So there's several benefits to um, getting, getting a solution like this. One of them, as I've mentioned, is 
is you get to track your work on your samples. So, you know, just like a regular or traditional freezer management tool, um, you would be able to capture the movement of the sample in and out of the freezer. But you'll also gain the, the ability to track tasks performed on samples, as well as maintaining those sample records, you know, maybe creating the sample records before or maintaining those sample records after those samples leave the lab, are consumed, you know, dropped on the floor, and you can't find it, you know, that, that sample record will be there. Another benefit is capturing all the sample data in, in a single place. Um, so you really get that complete view of sample context by being able to track the lineage. And you're also able to um, track and create custom um, sample fields to capture any of the metadata around those sample that's needed, um, as well as sort of capturing the location and movement within freezers. And, and all of this really helps give lab members insight into where the sample came from and and you know what may have generated from that sample and it's it, it makes it very easy if if you a are troubleshooting or b are sort of realizing oh we've we, we've got to you know discard all these samples at, at a given time and anything that was generated from it you know the tools like this are really giving good views on um on that sample lineage Another benefit is being able to upload experimental data when it's available. So um, oftentimes people will receive samples and they, it comes with experimental data or it, it's coming with, with um, data around it that you may want to add before you even receive the samples into the lab. You can also update data as it's being performed. It's a you know pretty standard, right? Maybe maybe you want to do it live, or if you want to, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to do it later, sort of post quality control or analysis, you would be able to do that really at any time. Because again, it's not because your sample is in the freezer that the sample is in the system. It's because you've registered the sample and it's part of the system in these sample centric freezer management tools. And then, yeah, adding data even after the sample has been consumed. Um, and there's really sort of no limit in, in when you want to add this data. So maybe you, you send out this sample to another lab and it takes a few weeks before you get data back. You would be able to still mark that sample as consumed in, from your freezer, but that record would still sort of be maintained and alive and well. So when you receive those results back from those other, other labs, you would be able to, to add it here as well. Another benefit is improving efficiency and collaboration. So I think we can all agree that visibility into um, lab work tends to tends to help everybody right we are able to gain insight into how to make improvements or how to make efficiencies in the lab process when we know what's actually happening in the lab and you can do this by by capturing tasks and jobs in workflow tools you can also standardize these regular tasks and, and feed samples into jobs. And so then as you're tracking the work you're doing in the lab, those samples are also being associated with that work. And when you're looking at a sample, you can see what work has been done. Or when you're looking at work, you can see what samples um, have been done. And so it, it's a um, it's an adjacent way to, to track work in the laboratory. And then really collaborating with team members. So um, some of these tools, in, including ours, will allow you to um, share this work with others and um, reassign work if, if somebody's out or, or has left the lab. And so there's um, lots of ways then to sort of work with your team to get um, the, the sample work done. And so really, uh, you know, in summary, a 
sample centric freezer management system will really sort of centralize this sample data instead of you know maybe having some things in notebooks and some things in a freezer management tool and some things in some database somewhere or on a network drive um, it can um, help centralize that data for you and make it easy to find and, and easy to analyze later also providing a full sample chain of custody. So if that's something that is important in terms of auditing for your lab, um, tools like this will really do that for you. Um, again, it's also very useful just in troubleshooting if, if you don't need a, a full chain of custody, but I think there's no lab that doesn't need a way to, to troubleshoot better. This is a way to do that. And then also maintaining sample information regardless of the status in the freezer. So I, I don't think I can say this enough because I do think it's really important that you're able to track sample information sort of whenever, right? Before it arrives, after it leaves, after it gets consumed, and it's sort of there and that, that record is maintained. So it wouldn't be a very good, um, uh, product manager, if I don't sort of uh, talk to you a little bit about how Sample Manager fits into our sample-centric workflows. And um, really, it is designed for real-world lab work. And um, our workflow management uh, allows teams to uh, map their lab processes and facilitate that collab collaboration that we've talked about. Um, we also give you tools to monitor that lab work and samples um, with, with just a quick look, right? So you'd be able to, to see what's going on pretty quickly. And because I'm not in presentation mode, we'll just alter it this way here today. Um, it's also designed to be intuitive and easy to use. Um, so we really did talk to a lot of scientists and, and sort of gleaned from, from our experience with, with our current users as well of how to make something that, that labs would want to use um, and, and something that would also be easy to set up um, and administer with, without a lot of hassle. As well as... Um, we, we also wanted it to be flexible um, and to scale easily and meet those changing needs. And so we've allowed for sort of unlimited custom, custom fields to capture that metadata on any of your data types. Um, and then it's really easily scalable, scalable, right? So you can add new freezers and users and workflows and all of those different things um, pretty much with a, with a couple clicks of a button. And, and I, I think I mentioned this before, but really we sort of designed this by scientists with, with the help of our very involved PAC members um, for those PAC members and for other labs uh, like yours. And so with that, I've got sort of my question slide, but I'd also love to hear from Steve on what the poll answer showed and maybe we can speak to that before we jump into questions. Yeah, so uh, the poll here, if uh, people haven't seen it, the, the question here is, what are your current freezer management challenges? This is a multiple choice question. Um, lax sample tracking, got 47%. Difficult to use, got 40%. Unable to get full sample chain of custody, 27%. Lax ability to customize, 20%. Sample data in too many places got 47%, too expensive, 30%. So, you know, um, I, I, I know that might be kind of understand hard to understand verbally that way, but hopefully that made sense. Yeah, remind me. So the, the two top ones were, were really lax sample tracking and the the difficult to you uh, to configure? samples and sample data in too many places. So the, sample big, data, pro right. the yep. big two problems, lack sample tracking, sample data in too many places. Yep. And, and absolutely. I think that <clears throat> a sample centric solution will really help with those types of things. Um, again, you know, centralizing that sample data and, and putting it into one, um, and then really being able to, to track everything that's happened to your sample, um, 
in a, in a single system then allows you to, to sort of follow that sample through the life cycle that, that we talked about in the beginning here. Um, I'm, I'm curious, were there any, any additional sort of other responses that, that I've missed here? Uh, on the poll? No, I think that's, okay. I think that's pretty good. So let's jump into questions. Yeah, so uh, from the Q&A window, um, how is a sample centric freezer management system similar to a LIMS? Yeah, so we we get this a lot actually, and it, it, you know there there are a lot of people that that come to us looking for for a limbs. Frankly, um, when when they're looking for a system like this, I I would consider uh, sample management systems in general and sample centric freezer management systems sort of a light version of a limbs. Right when you um, traditionally think of a limbs, there's a lot of automation and enforcement that happens with those limb systems. And we wanted to generate something that was more lightweight and frankly, easy, easier for labs to pick up and start using and sort of maybe less disruptive in their workflows. Um, and with that, you know, that, that comes at, at a decreased cost and um, it, they, they tend to be, um, more affordable than than limbs as well um and and then the other big distinction i think is that uh limbs will start to support things like inventory and billing and automatic experiment integration um where where sample centric tools are are designed to um to be that sort of middle ground between maybe a, a spreadsheet freezer management system or a traditional freezer management system and a limbs. So if you if you're not ready for a limbs yet, or frankly, if you're even ready for a limbs, I think taking a look at a sample centric solution could could probably benefit you. Great. Uh, and another question. Uh, how do we have uh, excuse me, do you have any advice? on how to switch from a traditional freezer management system to a sample centric one. Yeah, so I, I think we're gonna touch on this a little bit actually in my, my next presentation, but um, that, that's one of the things that we've heard from our clients of you know, making that, that switch or that migration it is going to, take, um, going to take a little bit of time. And, and at least for a sample manager, we've tried to make that process as uh, as easy and painless as possible with sort of providing um, templates. But what I would I would first do before before you even dive into the migration is take a look at the types of data that um, the, the types of samples that are getting stored in your freezer management system and try and map that to what that would look like in a sample centric solution and then track all the things that or write down all the things that you wish you were tracking and say you know can that sample centric solution really fit our needs and and track what we want 